Hello, in this Kotlin programming video, I am going to cover ranges and more specifically integer type ranges. So, for example, if I create a variable, say I'll call it, you know, range equals, and if we want this to let's say range between 1 to 100, you can do 1 dot 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 100. So, this, you know, has a range from 1 to 100, so that's pretty darn cool. So, you know, it's something different. Now, something you see in most programming languages, and if we were to loop over it, we could, you know, do a for loop, which says something like for value in range. Now, if we were to just print line, and just print out the value, let's just run it, see what we get. As you can see, it's got all of those values. We haven't had to create some, you know, sort of array with a hundred elements and then loop over it to assign, you know, i plus one to it, i plus plus to it or anything like that. You can also use this for strings as well. So you could use it for strings. So let me just you know, quickly show you the string equivalent. So the string equivalent would be something like, you know, I mean, character equivalent. It would be something like, you know, let's, let's call it R equals, let's say, A dot 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 C. So this is just A to C, so A, B, C. So I'll leave this there, and we add an extra task to manipulate this in a loop and with everything else that we do. I'm just going to use the integer range for now, but you can, you know, you, you could use floating point numbers as well. The principle is exactly the same. So what I want to show you now is another way of essentially, you know, looping over this or, you know, different ranges. So imagine, I'm just going to comment this out just because it would just be easy to see what we're doing in the console. If I did four, and imagine if I said four, you know, value in, you know, 100 down to 10. I think you can imagine what this does. It goes from 100 all the way down to 10. So this is another range that we can do. So if we print this out, it just saves a lot of time having to create other variables, you know, arrays or anything like that to essentially accommodate this scenario. And we've been able to loop all the way down from 100 to a 10 without the use of any other variables outside of the for loop. So that's no, pretty cool. We can use the until range. So if we do four, let's say value in the like ten, and if I say until one hundred. So now if I were to comment this, I want line out instead of these lines. And here, if I just do a print line, and if I print out the value. As you can see, we get all the values, but it's until, so it doesn't include that value. So that's just something to bear in mind. You can also use a method called dot range two. So you could also do essentially something like, I'll actually put it here within the comment. You could do four. And it's basically the same as this. So instead of saying four, 100, Blah, blah blah you could do for 100 dot down and this is a method down to essentially both of them is doing the same and you could do one for range as well so you go to copy that again and the range is similar to the until so instead of let's say 10 you would do 10 dot until 100 or 1000 whatever the number is and that's the same as what we've just done here. And you can experiment with these, test them out, and I recommend doing that as an extra task. So maybe, maybe, for example, we've got, you know, this right here. Maybe we don't want to do it, you know, in ones. Maybe we want to, we want to step it. So we could do step 10 and run it. And this works with all of these as well. A step does. As you can see, it steps in 10 now. So 10, 20, 30, 40. 
You could do in steps of 15, steps of 2, steps of 100, 29. It doesn't really matter. So that's, that's it really for Kotlin integer type ranges. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.